Dewey the Library Cat by Vicki Myron with Brett Witter Chapter 21 King of the Litter Dewey's pickiness wasn't just a matter of personality. He had a disease. No, really, it was true. As digestive systems go, that poor cat really got a lemon. Even when he was a kitten, Dewey hated being petted on the stomach. Stroke his back, scratch his ears, even pull his tail and poke him in the eye, but never pet his stomach. I didn't think much of it until Dr. Easterly tried to clean his back end when he was about two years old. I'll just push down on the glands and squeeze them clean, he explained. It will take thirty seconds. Sounded easy enough. I held Dewey while Dr. Easterly prepared his equipment. A pair of rubber gloves and a paper towel. Nothing to it, Dewey, I whispered. It will be over before you know it. But as soon as Dr. Easterly pressed down, Dewey screamed. This wasn't a mild complaint. This was a full-fledged, terrified cry. His body bolted like it had been hit by lightning, and his legs scrambled frantically. Then he threw his mouth over my finger and bit down. Hard. Dr. Easterly looked at my finger. He shouldn't have done that. I rubbed the sore. It's not a problem. Yes, it is a problem. A cat shouldn't bite like that. I wasn't worried. That wasn't Dewey. He wasn't a biter. And I could still see the panic in the poor cat's eyes. He wasn't looking at anything. He was just staring. The pain had been blinding. After that, Dewey truly hated Dr. Easterly. As soon as we pulled into the veterinary office's parking lot, he started shaking. The smell of the lobby sent him into uncontrollable tremors. He would bury his head in the crook of my arm as if to say, Protect me. As soon as he heard Dr. Easterly's voice, Dewey growled. Many cats hate the veterinarian in his office, but treat him as any other human in the outside world. Not Dewey. He feared Dr. Easterly unconditionally. If he heard his voice in the library, Dewey growled and sprinted to the other side of the room. If Dr. Easterly managed to sneak up on him and reach out to pet him, Dewey sprang up, looked around in panic, and bolted away. I think he recognized Dr. Easterly's smell. Dewey had found his arch-enemy, and it happened to be one of the nicest men in town. A few years later, Dewey started having trouble going to the bathroom. Some days, his litter box would have blood in it. Other days, he came tearing out of the back room like someone had lit a firecracker under his rear end. Dr. Easterly diagnosed Dewey with constipation. Extreme constipation. What kind of food does Dewey eat? I rolled my eyes. Dewey was the world's worst eater. He's very picky, I said. He has a remarkable sense of smell, so he can tell when the food is old or off in some way. Cat food isn't the highest quality, you know. It's just a bunch of leftover parts, so you can't blame him. Dr. Easterly looked at me like a kindergarten teacher eyeing a parent who had just explained away her child's disruptive behavior. He always eats canned food? Yes. Good. Does he drink water? Never. Never? The cat avoids his water dish like poison. More water, Dr. Easterly assured me. That should clear up the problem. Thanks, Doc. Nothing to it. Except, have you ever tried to get a cat to drink water against his will? It's impossible. I started with gentle coaxing. Dewey turned away in disgust. I tried bribery. No food until you drink some water. Don't look at me like that. I can last longer than you can. But I couldn't. I always gave in. I started petting Dewey as he ate. Slowly, the petting turned to pushing. If I force his head down into the water, I thought, he has to drink. Needless to say, that plan didn't work. Maybe it was the water. We tried warm water. We tried cold water. We tried refreshing the water every five minutes. We tried different faucets. Back then, there was no such thing as bottled water in Spencer, Iowa. We tried putting ice in the water dish. Everyone likes ice water, right? Actually, the ice worked. Dewey took a lick. One lick. But otherwise, nothing. How could an animal stay alive without water? Then, one day, I rounded the corner into the staff bathroom. There was Dewey, sitting on the toilet with his head completely buried in the bowl. All I could see was his rear end sticking straight up in the air. Toilet water! He was drinking toilet water! You sly cat! Well, I thought, at least he isn't going to get dehydrated. But that didn't help his constipation. Even though he drank toilet water, Dewey still couldn't go. When it got really bad, Dewey tended to hide. One morning, poor Cher and Joy reached into the top drawer of the circulation desk for a tissue, but instead grabbed a handful of hair. She literally fell out of her chair. How did he get in there? she asked, staring down at Dewey's back. His head and rear were completely buried in the drawer. Good question. 
The door hadn't been opened all morning, so Dewey must have climbed in during the night. I poked around under the desk. Sure enough, there was a small opening behind the drawers. But this was the top drawer, more than three feet off the ground. Mr. Rubberspine had wiggled his way to the top of the crevice, turned a tight corner, and then curled up to sleep in a space no bigger than a cupcake. I tried to wake him. Dewey shrugged me off and didn't move. This wasn't like him. Obviously something was wrong. Off to the vet's office. It turned out Dewey had a disease. See, I told you. It was called megacolon, and it was extremely rare. If Dewey had lived in the alley, his disease would have shortened his life. In the library, I could expect periodic but severe bouts of constipation, accompanied by very picky eating. So now Dewey had an excuse for not liking his food. That cat had it all figured out, didn't he? Dr. Easterly suggested an expensive cat food, the kind you could buy only from a veterinarian. I forgot the name, maybe middle-aged cat with tummy troubles formula? The bill almost broke the budget. I hated to dish out thirty dollars for something I knew wasn't going to work. I told Dr. Easterly, Dewey's not going to like this. Put it in the bowl. Don't give him anything else. He'll eat it. No cat will starve itself to death. I put the fancy new food in the bowl, just like Dr. Easterly said. Dewey didn't eat it. Just like I thought. He sniffed it once and walked away. This food, it's no good. I want the usual, please. The next day, he dropped the subtle approach. Instead of sniffing and walking away, he sat down by the food bowl and cried. Why? What have I done to deserve this? Sorry, Dewey. Doctor's orders. After two days, he was weak, but he wouldn't even bat the food with his paw. That's when I realized Dewey was stubborn. He was a mellow cat. He was accommodating. But when it came to an important principle like food, Dewey would never roll over and play dog. And neither would I. Mom could be stubborn, too. So Dewey went behind my back. First he hit up Cher and Joy by jumping on her desk and rubbing her arm. When that didn't work, he tried his old friend Joy. Then he tried Audrey, Cynthia, Paula, every librarian, right down the line. He tried Kay, even though he knew she was the no-nonsense type. Kay was a farm girl, and she had no time for weakness. But I could see even she was beginning to waver. She tried to act tough, but she was developing a real warm spot in her heart for the do. I didn't care. Let them disapprove. I was going to win this round. It might break my heart now, but in the end, Dewey would thank me. And besides, I was mommy, and I said so. On the fourth day, even the patrons turned on me. Just feed him, Vicky. He's so hungry. Dewey had been shamelessly putting on a starving cat act for his fans, and it was clearly working. Finally, on the fifth day, I caved and gave Dewey his favorite can of fancy feast. He gobbled it down without even coming up for air. That's it he said, licking his lips and then stepping to the corner for a long tongue bath of his face and ears. We all feel better now, don't we? That night, I went out and bought him an armful of cans. I couldn't fight any more. Better a constipated cat, I thought, than a starving one. For two months, Dewey was happy. I was happy. All was right with the world. Then Dewey decided he didn't like Fancy Feast chunky chicken flavor. He wasn't going to eat another bite of Fancy Feast chunky chicken flavor. He wanted something new, thank you very much. I bought a new flavor, something in the moist, smelly blob category. Dewey took one sniff and walked away. Nope, not that one either. You'll eat it, young man, or no dessert for you. At the end of the day, the food was still there, dried out and crusty. What was I supposed to do? The cat was sick. It took five tries, but I found a flavor he liked. It only lasted a few weeks. Then he wanted something new. Oh boy. The Library King was really getting fussy now. Soon, the situation was completely absurd. How could you not laugh at an entire bookshelf full of cat food? I'm not exaggerating. We kept Dewey's items on two shelves in the staff area, and one of them was only for food. We had at least five flavors on hand at all times. The Dew had Midwestern taste. His favorite flavors were beef, chunky chicken, beef and liver, and turkey. But you never knew when another flavor would strike his fancy. He hated seafood, but he fell in love with shrimp. For a week. Then he wouldn't touch it. Even worse, Dewey was still constipated. So on Dr. Easterly's orders, I copied a page out of a calendar and hung it on the wall. Every time someone found a present in Dewey's litter box, they marked the date. The calendar was known throughout the office as Dewey's poop chart. When Dewey hadn't gone for three days, we locked him in the back closet with his litter. Dewey hated being locked anywhere, especially a closet. It's for your own good, Dew. After a half hour, I let him out. 
If no evidence turned up in the litter box, I locked him in for another half hour. Note, poop, back in the box. Three times was the limit. After three times, he wasn't holding out. He really couldn't go. This strategy completely backfired. Dewey soon became so pampered he refused to use the litter unless someone took him to the box. He stopped going completely at night, which meant first thing in the morning I had to carry him, yes, carry him, to his litter. Talk about being the king. 